Hello, my name is Elena and my hand model is Pam. We are from Dr. Dave Mazikowicz and Hugh Frederick's office. We are going to demonstrate today how to perform exercises after a zone two flexor tendon injury. These exercises and this video are meant for educational purposes only. Um, unless you've been approved to do so by one of your therapists or surgeons, you should definitely reach out to your provider to make sure you've been approved to do these exercises. So the first exercise we're gonna start with is passive range of motion. And passive range of motion means you're taking your unaffected hand and you are stretching or bending the affected or injured hand <clears throat> into flexion. So you can start with each of the stiff fingers and you're going to go until you feel tension or pain. And if you're feeling pain, back off just a little bit, and then you're gonna hold that position for 10 seconds. And ideally, you're gonna be doing this at least once an hour. And so each time you're gonna do this several repetitions between three and five repetitions. As you gain increased range of motion, you can do them fewer, but while you're missing range of motion, you can do them more frequently and with longer duration. So what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna to go to the point where it can no longer stretch any further, or if you can go all the way, you want the tip of your finger to touch the palm and you want all three of the joints, the DIP joint, the PIP joint, and the MP joint to be fully flexed into your palm. And you're gonna hold that for 10 seconds and then you can actively release it. When I say actively release it, it's very important not to overstretch the injured finger. So if he can only go to here, we're not going to force him to go any further because that could risk rupturing the tendon. So this is her injured finger. That's her little Z plasty. We're going to come down and we're going to stretch only to the point of tension and hold 10 seconds. Now your unaffected fingers most likely will have, you know, pretty good motion, but your affected finger will definitely be lacking. So you're just going to go to the point where it is um, limited and then hold. And then again, when you release, the other hand doesn't help it go straight. It straightens within the confines of the splint. You want to avoid over straightening. If you could show that, Pam, where you stretch out of the splint, that is no longer in a protected position. So you want to make sure that the back of the hand stays in that splint. And then you just reach to the roof and you can see that the hand continues to be in the protected position. Now, once you get better motion, you can do all four of these fingers at once, but while they're limited, it's best to do them individually. So that's the first exercise. The second exercise is what we call the scratch exercise. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to scratch the fingers down. And what we want to look for is we want to look for the fingers to reach a three quarter fist. So um, you're going to start at like the, the middle finger and you're going to scratch towards your ring finger. So I'm going to move my hand out of the way so you can see, but the motion is more of a scratch where you're really focusing on leading with this tip. That's the deepest tendon in your finger and he tends to get stuck down the fastest. So you just want to make sure that you're not neglecting that finger, the, the DIP joint and doing something that looks like that. So more of a scratch. Good. Now you're not going to do a full fist until you've been approved to do so by your therapist or your surgeon. Okay. The last exercise is what we call reverse blocking. This is really important in patients whose fingers don't straighten past here. So what you're going to do is you're going to bend the finger down with your other hand. You're going to hold that MCP joint, this guy down here, you're going to hold him in flexion. And then you're going to straighten against the, the, ten, the downward tension of your unaffected hand. So you're going to push up as hard as you can with your muscle power and you're going to push until you feel it resist with the other hand. So go ahead and push a little bit more. There you go. Okay, so then we'll do the same thing. And then push up. 
So initially, you most likely won't have full extension of your injured finger, and that's why it's important to continue to work on this until we do have improved extension of the PIP and DIP joints. The other fingers usually come along quite a bit faster, and you can decrease the amount of frequency and repetitions to those fingers as they get back to normal. But until this finger is back to normal, you're gonna be focusing on that exercise making sure you're doing it five times for 10 seconds, approximately once an hour, or as directed by your therapist. Um, the last thing you wanna work on is starting scar massage. The scar tissue becomes very adherent in this zone of injury because it is very superficial to the, the tendon. So there's not a lot of space for that tendon to slip and slide underneath the scar. So the more scar mobility we have, the better that finger is going to do. So you don't wanna do fast. You wanna do slow, sustained stretching of that scar tissue. Our rule of thumb is time under tension. When you find a tight spot, you wanna spend significant amount of time, 20, 30 seconds in one direction before switching it to another direction. But you can see the skin can easily move um, around in circles, up and down. Uh, and so when your scar is adherent, you're not going to see that. And so you just wanna make sure that early on you start scar mobility.